Okay, let's see. All right, so we're going to put this down a little bit. Hello, everyone. So, trying to get everything set up here. We're going to start in just a minute. Now. Hi, guys. So, I'm Heidi. I'm with Opticom. Um, we are going to kind of go through uh, some of the stuff for sawmill application and the different products that we have uh, for sawmills, some of the older stuff, some of the newer stuff, and some of the newer, newer stuff that you may or may not have seen or heard of yet. So uh, as we go through this, uh, they have a little thing on your um, form here where you can actually um, like uh, raise your hand, I think, and ask a question. Um, I'm not great at looking at it, but I will try to do my best to look at it every now and then. Um, I do have AirPods in my ears. It's just easier to do the calls this way. It's a little more hands-free for me without all the echo. Uh, so here we go. So we're going to roll into this. So our first thing we're going to look at, and I'm going to share my screen again here. So the first thing we'll look at is the kind of the application data sheet, right? So Opticom, we've been around since 1973. We've been doing industrial video for, uh, I think, going on 20 years now. Um, I've been with the company for 10 years. Um, most of you know me, if you're on here, probably. Um, or if you're not, welcome. I'm Heidi again. Uh, so we do a lot of business with the sawmill industry. We do heavy vibration cameras and video equipment. Um, so that goes from start to finish from uh, the, the camera end of it, as well as uh, the monitor, uh, the, the DVR, or the recording device, or the, the splitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so we do kind of start to finish. So we've got the, the complete solution for you. Uh, we're going to run through uh, this little form I have up on my screen. Uh, can you see that? I hope you can see that. And um, so we'll run through that right now. Uh, this is just a kind of a, it's more of a marketing flyer than anything, but it, it kind of gives you an idea. So uh, I will stop saying uh, as well. Um, so dusty and heavy vibration areas, that's a, a big specialty for us to increase the productivity and efficiency of sawmill operations. So we can do the security portion of it. If you're talking to people that want security for their mill, that's not a problem. We have that as well. We have a full commercial line, but a lot of where we focus is on the industrial part. So I'm not talking about for security inside the mill. I'm talking about for cameras to be mounted for the video process, right? So you've got a one line and you've got an operator that has his monitor right there and you can put multiple cameras down the line so he can see it all on his monitor. Most mills nowadays have cameras. There's only a few that I've come across here and there that don't even have anything yet, but most of them have cameras. And a lot of the problem we come into is they're constantly replacing cameras. So you get into a mill, uh, you're talking to somebody, or you are the, the plant manager at a mill, or you're the electrical supervisor or the maintenance guy, right? And you're constantly replacing cameras. And you're not thinking anything of it because that's what the guy before you is doing, and that's just kind of the way it is, right? There's nothing out there. So there is something out there. I've got a lot of people that would uh, testify to this that are in mills that are plant managers and electrical supervisors and maintenance managers and things like that that say, hey, we had problems all the time, and we put the Opticom cameras in, and we're not having those problems anymore. So you're welcome to, uh, we'll just start with this, right? You're welcome to shoot me a message, send me an email, follow up, whatever you may want to do with us. Give us a call if you want names of those people just to kind of have in your back pocket if you want to call them. But I do have guys at different mills across uh, the U.S. and Canada that are have given us the, the go ahead. Hey, we're more than happy to testify to your products, basically. So again, so here's what we do. So I've got products I'm going to show you. The monitor, so we monitor plant operations. Increase the productivity. Obviously, we know when we throw cameras anywhere, I don't care what place it is, a facility, a gas station, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter where you put cameras. Productivity always shoots up, right? People are being watched. They're not taking as many breaks. Uh, and then you've got the reduce the downtime for facilities and plants and mills. That's super important. So if you have a problem and you've got a camera on it and you've recorded it, right? I know a lot of mills don't like to record inside, but if you're actually recording the problem on the line, you can go back and you can use it for troubleshooting. All of our DVRs have a really slow frame by frame playback and it's meant for troubleshooting. So you can look at it and you go frame by frame to see what jammed up, why it jammed up, what went wrong, uh, and proof uh, the security and safety of the, the mill as well. So that's kind of the general overview. If you go to the back of this page right here, and that's most of the products we're putting into mills right now. Every now and then we're putting a commercial camera for security, again, security part of it, but I'm, I'm focusing today on the industrial part of the mill, the part that you really struggle with uh, inside of your mills. So we've got our CCO2, two different CCO2s, the CCO4, our explosion proof, um, vibration mounts, magnetic mounts, and I don't have my monitors on this page, but we have monitors as well, and then the splitters also. So we're going to run through those. I'm going to try not to take everybody's time. I know everybody's very busy. We appreciate you coming out and, and being on here and checking it all out. So we'll start with the CCO2. So most of you, if you're familiar with Opticom, then you know this camera. So this is it right here. This is the little CCO2 camera. 
I do not have the mount on it right now. There's two mounts, so this camera comes with the mount in the picture right there. It's a triaxial mount, so you can mount that and actually fashion that in a lot of different ways. So it's convenient. The camera's quite small. This is why I like to show you on video. So this camera can be put underneath machinery, inside of machinery. It's really, really small and really, really durable. If you check out our website uh, when you're bored later, right? Maybe because you, know, you don't have anything to do. Uh, if you check out toughestvideocamera.com, we have a short, it's 49 second video about this camera and it shows the durability of it, right? So we've got trucks rolling over it while it's running live, right? So you can still see it. We've got people that slam it up the wind to walls. I mean, this, it's pretty much the indestructible camera is what we like to call it. And then you can see down there on the bottom left of this page on my screen, we have this little vibration mount. So this is gonna mount right on the camera, right? So it goes just like that. Uh, this one is not included, this is separate. So I'll come back to that mount. So with this one, this camera is vibration resistant as it is. So if you're saying, I need something that I can put around the mill, that I can mount on the machinery that's gonna work, this is what you want to buy. If you call me and you say, hey, Heidi, I'm gonna throw a camera on my debarker, I'm gonna want you to put this on it too. So you know in your mill, you know if you have higher vibration areas than others, right? So the higher vibration areas, we wanna add this mount on there um, and, and go that route. It'll last a lot longer. So that's the way to go. I have a guy, I was just in um, a mill in Philadelphia, Mississippi. Uh, it was a warehouser mill and they've had our cameras they've been buying our stuff for about oh, six or seven years and they were one of the first mills to actually buy this mount whenever we created it and he told me the other day he's like it finally six or seven years later he's like it finally wore out from the vibration the grommets actually finally wore out so if you're in a mill and you know and it's on a debarker right and you know that camera hasn't failed the the, the vibration mount six or seven years on a debarker is a really 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 long time you know what that debarker does to anything that you put near it, more or less mount it on it, right? So that's what we're talking about as far as the quality part of it. You know, and he's like, I don't want any warranty. I want to buy another one. We more than got our money's worth out of it, right? So that's what we're kind of talking about with our product. So, um, so this is it. So this is the CCO2. So the gray one right here, the little gray unit, this is an analog unit. We're going to get into some of our other stuff, our IP stuff and our TVI stuff, okay? So we've got other technologies. Uh, this is going to have a BNC and a power plug. Uh, so this is the one that kind of started it all with us, with the industrial mount. So we put these, we had a mill that came in, ordered 120 of these cameras, right? Right off the bat, brand new mill. We went 120. We said, all right. You know, we sent them out. Three months later, they're like, we had six go bad, right? And if you bought the CCO2 camera, you know that they don't really go bad. So we're like, all right, you know, warranty, right? Ship them out six new ones. Same six went bad. And that was when we decided that we needed to create this, right? So that was when we came up with this because he had them in such a high vibration area, just those six out of 120, that it couldn't stand up. We made these, put these out there, and he's not had a problem since. So we work really hard with the mills to hear the feedback and know what you're saying and know what your problems are so we can adjust things. If you've ordered cameras, these for a while, then you'll know that in the past, I think, year, the backs of these have changed. Same thing, right? We hear feedback. So we actually changed the backing to the whole camera to where it used to kind of go into like a little hole. And now it's, it's basically, it's an IP68, almost a NEMA 4. Well, it is a NEMA 4. We just haven't gotten it rated yet. But we changed it so it would be NEMA 4 rated. Um, so you can see how this is a little different. I don't know if you can really see it. Um, so again, the feedback. We like to hear from the mills. We work on different projects. So all of our products are tested in mills. We work with the guys in the mills to make sure it's going to last. So that is our analog one, right? So a standard BNC and a power plug. So you can power it locally. Mills, I was in Mills a couple of weeks ago uh, for a really, 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 really long time. For two weeks, I was in and out of Mills. Um, and here's what I've learned. And I've been out of Mills for years, right? Is that these Mills, what you're doing is you're powering all your cameras locally. And that's fine. You can power them locally. You're running your conduit and you're doing all this work. Just so you know, on an analog camera or a TVI, any coaxial camera, you can run Siamese cable. It runs your power and your video, okay? So you can run that Siamese cable, and that will eliminate you having to power every camera locally. So your camera, you would power it right at the DVR or right at your splitter. So it comes, it's basically one cable, but it's two sheets put together, and you're going to run that. So I find a lot of y'all are running your stuff right there, and this would just eliminate a lot of extra work where you can run your, your video and your power together. So keep that in mind. If you have questions about that, let me know. Uh, we recommend the RG59. It's called RG59 Siamese, and the Siamese is your power in your video. So that would probably help with a lot of additional labor, uh, labor costs, uh, a lot of additional work that's really not that fun. Uh, so that would really be big, big helper for you. So keep that in mind. I notice a lot of guys are not aware of that. So we'll go to our TVI camera, which is next. So this one is the same as the one I just showed you. It's yellow, right? Same size, same camera, same housing, same molding, everything. 
So what this is, is this is actually a 1080p high definition camera. So we're talking like Sunday football HD camera, right? Um, it's a different chipset. It is still a BNC and a power port, right? The difference with this is that because it's a 1080p, that means it's a digital signal. So if you try to plug this camera into one of your existing monitors, it is not going to work. If you try to plug it into a splitter that you have, it is not going to work. So what you would do is you would put it through one of the newer DVRs that's a hybrid, and this is how we're swapping a lot of mills over to this, right? So you would do a hybrid DVR. So say our four channel DVR, you would replace the quad splitter that you have or your current DVR. And I always recommend you swap out your DVR first. Because if you do that, then you can use all of your analog cameras that you already have in place on that DVR. But then as you start to add cameras or maybe change out cameras, you put the TVI cameras in, right? And then you can have your unit that will take both the analog and the TVI at the same time. This is the most cost effective way to start switching over to an HD image in your mill. So I really, really recommend that you look at it, that you consider it. Um, again, start with your DVRs and go that way. Once you get your DVRs swapped out and then you start swapping out your cameras, then you look at your monitors, right? So part of the deal with the monitors is that if you've got an HD picture, but you're running it on a low res monitor, you're not going to see that HD picture on the low res monitor, right? So you want to make sure that as you're making that switch, that's on your list as well down the road, that you're putting it into a 1080p monitor or higher. Um, so again, you can't have a 1080p picture and put it into a non 1080p monitor, um, high res monitor HD. So that is this. So again, so this is a great way for you to switch to HD without having to recable because this all runs over coax. So if you're like, hey, we need to upgrade our system and we need to get high def image, but I am not rerunning cable. We're not paying somebody to rerun cable. I don't want to rerun cable. This is the way to go. If you have questions about that, call me, email me, and we'll get you set up and we can lay out a plan that is the most cost effective way for you to move forward. So if you're saying, hey, we've got this budget a month, you know what I mean? We can lay that out for you and help you do that and move forward with it. Um, next, we will go, and again, that vibration mount does work with it as well, right? So same camera, it'll still fit. Next, we will go to the CCO4. So I've got the CCO4 here. So this is the same as the CCO2s you saw, except this is our IP version. So this is an IP networking camera, right? So this is it right here. CCO4, you can see it has that same mount. It's obviously bigger, right? You can see it's bigger. Um, then this one and this one you're going to order this one in with the vibration mount So this is how uh, the camera is right so you can kind of see the way it is It's got the plug it's all the dust proof resistant uh, or dust resistant vibration proof all of that with it again the mount the rubber grommets are here and here and here Right, so same thing you're gonna be able to mount this on your machinery and your mill, but it's IP networking Okay, so this is gonna plug right in right ethernet port you can power it locally or it is POE So you can do power over ethernet with this as well um, POE is only about a 300 foot range. That's why we have the power local um, option as well. So you can do that. So here's this, it is ONVIF compliant, O-N-V-I-F, right? So that is an open platform across the industry for the CCTV industry, uh, open platform so that if you say you, you're sitting here and you're like, you know what, I've already got IP cameras in here. We already made the switch to IP a year ago and I've got this software system and man, but I really am having problems in a couple of areas with cameras. Because our stuff is on disk compliant with that open platform, you're going to be able to integrate that into your existing system. All right. So that's no problem. So if you're worried about that kind of stuff, the integration, it integrates beautifully. Um, that is the point of this on disk compliant. If you're like, hey, we really want to switch to IP and we don't have this and, and, you know, we're starting from scratch. We don't know what to do. Like I said before, we've got the complete system from cameras to software to NVRs to the monitoring. So we can set you up. Just give us a call, we'll work through, if you wanna do a gradual uh, progression to the IP, give us a call, we'll work through the best way to do it, the most cost-effective solution to do it. Um, if you're looking like, hey, we're gonna do it all in one shop, or it's a new mill, whatever it may be, let us know. We've, we've done a lot of the, the newest mills right now. Um, Opalika just opened the mill, we just outfitted that whole mill. Um, Orco uh, up in Grayling, we just outfitted that whole mill. So that kind of gives you an idea, like we're, we're doing the ground up, but we're doing a lot of integration for mills that are trying to switch over. Um, another thing that we do that works really well, so if you've got the analog system, right, a lot of you guys have that old analog system in place, and um, oh, I just messed everything up, and you've got that old analog system in place, but you're saying, hey, and my planar mill, we're going to go IP over there, and I need to figure out how we're going to do that, right? So with that, what you need to do is give me a call. We'll take your analog system, we'll swap out the DVRs, and we'll put them on our DVRs. But then for your IP system, we'll put a whole new system in with the, uh, the NVR that we talked about, our software. And what you'll be able to do with that is because you have my DVR and my networking video recorder with your IP system, you can integrate it together so that if you say, hey, I'm going to get online and I want to see every camera in the mill, 
they're integrated as if it's one cohesive system. So that is a huge feature to where you can have one guy at the main office that's looking at everything, not like the main corporate office, but you know what I mean, your main office in front, right? That's looking at everything. So that's a really big deal that you can integrate both of your types of systems, analog, TDI, IP, all across one platform to where it's all viewed as one system. Um, so next, what we have is our explosion proof, right? So we've got a few of these going on the mills as well. So I've got one of these. This is my IP Verifocal, so it's the biggest one we have, and it's, I mean, it's, just, it's heavy. <laughs> so it's explosion proof, right? Um, so you can see this right here, right? LEDs, uh, there's a Verifocal lens in there. This is our original demo, so it does look a little different. We've got the rubber ring in there now for the um, infrared, so you don't get that reflection on there. So um, put that down real quick. So we've got that. Again, it's got the, the um, RJ45 connection for the IP, and then it can, it's PoE or it can be powered locally. So that's really important, right? So uh, we've got, you know, on the POE end, we've got the extenders and things. So if you need to go more than 300 feet, you know, we've got all of that there as well. So with this, we also have on the bottom left, right around here, you can see this uh, is on a mount. So with that, you can actually uh, put it on a vibration mount. So it goes on this. This is also my monitor vibration mount. So same thing. So here's the mount, right? So you've got this mount and this works. This is my monitor vibration mount. And then for the, this one is the monitor one, right? For the explosion proof, we've got different holes drilled in it for the mount for that. So it tilts, right? I mean, I'm pretty tight, right? It's got a vibration area, so you gotta have it pretty snug. So it tilts this way, right? And it goes side to side, which is tight as well. I'm not gonna loosen it side to side as well, but you can see the grommets again. So there's your rubber grommets that are in here. So what you do with this is you're actually gonna, let me tighten this back up or else it's gonna be flinging everywhere. Um, so what you're gonna do is you, take this part, you unscrew this part, this piece right here, right, this little panel piece off, you mount it to the back of the monitor or the back of the camera, and you're gonna mount this part to the wall, and then you just slide it in place, and then you screw it in from the bottom, and that's how it goes. But with the rubber grommets, again, what that's gonna do is you're gonna increase the lifespan of all of the cameras that you're putting in your mill. So that means that, you know, Joe is not running out there every day to swap out cameras and to mess with this and swap out monitors because this isn't working and that's not working and this went bad and you know the game if you're in a mill you know how often you're having to move stuff around or you're having to go out and you're having to refocus stuff right because of the vibration um you know you're having to refocus all this stuff so it gets tedious it gets old and it costs a lot of money to do it so that's kind of you know what we're doing so our monitors i didn't pull one out to show you um our monitors We've been putting monitors in the mills for a really long time. Um, they're heavy duty industrial. We've got a brand new industrial line out. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with our older monitors, which have done great. What we've done is we've actually taken that monitor and we've made it to where our standard is now uh, a metal instead of a high impact plastic, which, which was great, but we've got it to where it's actual metal housing on the monitors now. So they're super durable, super rugged. They all work with our uh, vibration mounts. If you're saying, hey, Heidi, you know what? I don't need to put this in a cab out on the floor, right? It's going in the office. That's great. We'll put the monitor out there and we'll put it on a regular mount and that's no big deal. So we can do that as well. And uh, that'll, you know, I mean, that works too. So we've got all of that ceiling mount, wall mount, uh, desk mount, anything like that. Our monitors range from uh, about seven inches and we go up to um, 50 inches um, on the industrial monitor, right? So our most popular sizes, we sell a lot of 10.4s uh, on the floor, honestly, on the floors of the mills, we're doing 15s, 17s, 19s. And then now with that HD, it's a 21 and a half. So HD, 1080p resolution for a monitor. You cannot get it, no one makes it. It's just the technology is not there yet. It's coming, it's just they just don't have it yet for less than a 19 and a half inch monitor. So if you're buying a 19 inch, not a 19 and a half, a 19 inch monitor, a 17 inch monitor, it is not gonna be 1080p because the technology is just not on the market yet. It will be, so right now, you wanna make sure you're 19 and a half or up. So our industrial monitor, the smallest industrial monitor we have that's gonna be 1080p is a 21 and a half. So we do move a lot of those because they want that HD. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Um, and the cabs, we do a lot of 32s, uh, again, the smaller sizes, and we do the 50s as well. So that is a very quick, I talked very quickly, I apologize, um, a very quick rundown on uh, kind of our industrial products, uh, the vibration resistant, all the dust proof, you know, the monitors, we're not putting them in housings in the mills, they're just doing really well. Um, so we're really excited about all of the, the new products. Again, we've got the IP solution. If you're thinking, you know, you want to go IP or you want to go HD and you don't want to recable all of that, then I would definitely recommend switching over to that yellow camera I showed you, which is the TBI, which is the 1080p as well. And then if you're saying, hey, we're ready to go IP, we're ready to make the move, then you can go that way. We have that solution as well. Um, I do recommend if you're looking at IP, as, as many of you know, make sure that you have got a separate IP infrastructure for your IP cameras, right? It takes a lot of work. Um, and a, or not a lot of work, it takes a lot of bandwidth, a lot of work too, but a lot of bandwidth to push all of that data through. 
So you don't want anything that's going to float on your automation within the mill itself. So uh, that is our uh, webinar for the day. Uh, again, that toughestvideocamera.com. You can see that video. Uh, you're welcome to call our office, 269-966-2900. Or you can visit our other website, which is opticomtech.com. And that one lists off all of our products. Um, it's more of a everything kind of website. So again, uh, 269-966-2900. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email us. Uh, my email is Heidi, H-E-I-D-I, at opticomtech.com. Or you can always email info at opticomtech.com. Uh, thank you and have a great day.